We have a third speaker tonight, and that is George Ann Johnson. She'll be working on level one of the presentation mastery path. Uh, she's returning for part two of the speech she previously gave. And the purpose of the project is to incorporate evaluation uh, improvement suggestions from the speech one to the second speech. Speech is five to seven minutes. It focuses on three tips on learning another language, which also translates to three tips for living life more fully. Uh, Georgian taught second language learning for 45 years, and the three qualities she will discuss were those that she found to be most important in language learning. Uh, please welcome Georgian Johnson, giving her speech entitled Three Tips for Language Learning and Living Life. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. I was sitting at my desk a few months ago and I discovered my brain was melting. Melting brain syndrome is a real condition in which your brain swishes around in the cranial cavity and whispers to you, I need stimulation now. I could see the issue was urgent. I needed to do something to save my soggy brain. What could I do? I knew I could learn a second language. In my case, it would be Spanish. Research has shown that indeed second language learners do have more brain power. They memorize things better, they retain better, they hear better, they do better in their original language. They multitask more efficiently. They decide things more quickly and they do better in other academic areas like math, who would have thunk? Learning another language is such a complex endeavor that the brain is taxed in many, many areas. It's one of the best things you can do to improve and exercise your brain. Now, as an ESL teacher, I discovered there are three qualities that make language learning much better, much more efficient. Those same three qualities are those which also make people live their lives with more plume. Let me make these three suggestions and see if you agree. Tip number one, realize that you will make horrendous mistakes and that you will learn from those mistakes. A friend once told me, I screw up so many times and I learn so much from those screw ups, I think I'm going to continue to screw up. Indeed, when I learned uh, uh, Spanish originally, I went to a level zero class and I made some egregious error and I turned to the class and I said, yo estoy muy embarazada. I'm so embarrassed, but that isn't what I said. What I said was, I'm so pregnant. My future cringed. That did not worry me because my dears, if you fall on your face, you're still moving forward. Tip number two, be prepared to work, work, work. Thomas Edison was absolutely right. Success is 10% inspiration and it is 90% perspiration. I had a student, his name was Jesus. He was 91 years old and he was determined to learn English. He studied, 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 studied. Every time I saw him, the man was studying. So I mentioned this to my mom. I was telling her about his strong work ethic, but I also mentioned that he wasn't top of the class. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, said my mother. Now my mother is not a crude person, but this was an expression she used when she wanted to make a very vital point. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, the boy, meaning Jesus, is 91. He studies, 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 and he is growing and producing. Isn't that what it's all about? Yeah, mom, that's what it's all about. Tip number three, the last tip. 
have a positive attitude. Only you can control your attitude. You can decide that, oh, there's so many obstacles, there's so many handicaps, there's so many problems, or you can decide, you know, I can do this. This brings me to a student named Kevin. Kevin was a seventh grader who had cerebral palsy. His hands and his legs were twisted. He didn't walk well, he couldn't write well. His parents brought him to school every morning. They had to walk because they were so poor they didn't have a car. On the first day of school, I asked the students who were level one and knew a little English, I asked them to introduce themselves. I recorded this and so I remember what, Jesus, what uh, Kevin said. He said, hey, I'm Kevin. No, don't speak English well, but very soon I learned great English. I don't walk well, I don't write well, but I be your cheer man. When you make, no, when you commit terrible mistakes, I will never laugh, never. At the end of the school year, Jesus was voted by his classmates as most enthusiastic, motivating, pro-attitude guy in the class. When the kids were leaving the last day of class, Jesus said, hey, Mrs. Johnson. I said, hey, Kevin. Goodbye, Mrs. Johnson. Goodbye, Kevin. And off he went. But then he came back. Hey, Mrs. Johnson. Kevin, honey, I have work to do. I, no, Mrs. Johnson, you're supposed to say, hey, Kevin. Okay. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Mrs. Johnson, I love you. And all that I could think was, oh, Kevin, me, you too, me. But Kevin was gone. He was long gone. He had other places to bring his sunshine to. Kevin was hardworking. Kevin made mistakes, but he was risk-taking. Kevin had such a great attitude. I learned these three traits from him. Thank you, Kevin. Outstanding, Georgianne. Thank you so much.